Hi everybody, my name is Julie Sebi. I write the Analytics Corner blog that focuses on data engineering, analytics, and visualization with Alteryx and Spotfire. You can find my site at the URL shown on the screen. I post articles once a week. I'm doing more and more with video, so please click on the subscribe button to stay up to date on all the latest content. Now, if you've been following along, you know that my series on learning the Spotfire expression language is a bit of a long journey. I've been posting on this subject for several weeks now, and my last post covered bar chart axis names. This week, I'm looking at line chart axis names. Bar charts and line charts share the axis.color and axis.x axis names, so if you understood them in bar charts, they'll be very similar in line charts. Now, before I begin, I just want to note that if you look up axis names for line charts in the TIBCO documentation, you'll find four axis names. And here I've pulled up that documentation, and this is the documentation for 10.3, and I've looked all the way up to 10.6, and I, I haven't looked all the way to the most recent version, but you'll see if I scroll down that under line charts, they list four axis names. Axis.feature isn't actually an axis name. I reached out to TIBCO support about this because I had never used this before, and they said it was an error in the documentation that's apparently been in there for quite some time. So the three axis names that you can use on line charts are axis.x, axis.color, and axis.line. So now that we know what we're working with, let's start with axis.x. Axis.x refers to the column of data on the x-axis of the bar chart, which in this case is a column called p underscore date. This data can be a date hierarchy, a categorical column of data, or a categorical hierarchy. So for my first example, I'm showing an expression that calculates a cumulative sum. And the expression is the sum of oil over all previous axis.x. And the way to interpret this expression is calculate the current node or the current month by summing oil for all previous nodes or all previous months. If the x-axis was set up with quarters, it would calculate a cumulative sum by quarter, which makes this expression very dynamic. You can change what's on the x-axis, either the hierarchy level or the column itself, without modifying this expression. That's why axis names are so powerful. I use the terminology node because that's the terminology you'll find in TIBCO documentation. When I first started working with axis names, I found their documentation hard to follow because I didn't understand what a node is. A node is just the values on the x-axis, like the individual months or quarters. October is a node, November is a node, etc. So this is a very simple example, and if I want to make it a bit more complex, I could always add to it by, for example, adding a variable to the line by selector, like my lease. And because we are using axis names, I don't have to change any part of the expression. It just updates. If we were doing this in a calculated column, the expression that I would have written in order to get the equivalent of the first expression is this. And this is what I would have used to calculate the first expression. But then if I wanted to change it so that it calculated for each lease, I would have to add an intersect. And so that's the beauty of axis names. Now, I want to pause and note that when you're working with dates and axis.x, you must use a hierarchy. So if I cancel out of this, and you can see in my x-axis that I have chosen the year-month hierarchy. If I were to switch this to just the date column itself, it would give you an error that says cannot find axis.x. Now you can work around this by creating a single level hierarchy. And if I just create a hierarchy with pdate, I would be able to use that as well. So it's a little bit of a trick there. So that explains what you need to know about working with axis.x with dates and date hierarchies. So now I want to switch over to a categorical column of data. And so to do that, I'm going to take this line by off of my visualization, and I'm also going to modify my filtering. So now that my filtering is changed, I will set reservoir which is a categorical column of data, onto my x-axis. 
So now the expression is still calculating relative to the order of values on the x-axis because I'm using this all previous. It's calculating a cumulative sum, but it's just cumulative to the order of the values. So this is how much production reservoir A contributed, and then it just keeps adding up all of the totals as we move from left to right. Now, if you have any issues with the ordering of values, just a reminder that you can change the ordering of your values by going into column properties and the sort order tab, and you can configure a custom sort order. And that will arrange the values along the x-axis in the order that you want, and therefore then calculate in the order that you want. Okay, so axis.x is pretty simple. So let's move on to axis.line. And to do that, I'll pop into a different visualization. So axis.line is going to reference the column of data applied to the line by variable. And in this case, you see I've added lease to my line by. So in this example, I have a line for the three leases that I have filtered down to. And the expression that I'm working with is sum of oil divided by sum of oil over all axis dot line. And what this is doing is calculating the percentage that each well contributes to any given node or any given month. And so the way to interpret this expression is sum oil for each node or for each month and well, and then divide that by the sum of oil for all lines or all leases. And so that's how we get to this percentage. Now, what if you want each line to have a different color? That involves engaging the axis.color axis name. And so I'll discuss that in just a few minutes. But, but first, let's look at another use of axis.line. So my next example is something that all reservoir engineers want to calculate in their visualizations, which is a dynamic average. So first, I'm just going to go ahead and put a average line for each well, so, or, so this is what each lease is averaging out to each month. But what if you want to get the average of these three lines? That is where we can employ axis names. So I'll tell it to calculate the average oil over all axis.line. And you can see that throws an error there, but that's just because I need to select column names in the colors. And now I have two different colors, one for my average line and one for the individual well lines. Now, as I worked through visualization examples, after I created this chart, I wanted to modify it so that each lease had its own color so that I would have three distinct colors for the leases and then a different color for the average line. I tried a number of different expressions and additions to the line by and the color by, and the, all of those attempts failed. And so I reached out to Tibco support who informed me that this chart here is as good as it gets. You can't have multiple columns and then color each line its own color, which has been unfortunate. But let's take a look at how we can add more color to one of the previous examples. So here's a, so here's a visualization that we were working with previously. This is where we are calculating the percentage that each lease contributes to each month. So this one creates 8% of the total, 22% of the total, 69% of the total. This is a little bit dull. What if we want to spice it up a bit by adding a color to each line? So the logical way to do that would be to go over to color by and add lease. But if we do that, you'll see that the values all turn to one or 100%, and this is clearly not what I was looking for. So this change gives the wrong result because Spotfire uses color in the expression without expressively referencing it. I explained this with an example in the axis names for bar charts post. So if you want to understand why this happens, go to the axis names for bar charts. So what we're going to do in order to get the correct result or the desired result is change the expression. So I'm first I'm going to remove lease from the line by selector and then I'm going to add in axis.color because I still have color on my chart. And this happens occasionally where I'll modify it. It says it's wrong, although I know that this expression is correct. And I've found that what I have to do is actually just 
get rid of everything. So I'm going to copy this and remove it. And then I'll add this back. And it works. It's kind of a little bit of a bug in Spotfire that it does that. But so the way that we achieved our objective of getting a color for each line is by referencing axis.color in the expression and by having color by set to the lease with nothing on the line by. If I tried to add lease into the line by, it would be problematic. And that explains how to use axis names in Spotfire line charts. Next week, I'll look at cross tables. Between now and then, if you would hit that subscribe button, it would really mean a lot to me, and I'll see you next week.